Hello guys, uh, my name is Evans and uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll continue looking at uh, um, the February March 2017 um, IGCSE ICT paper 1 2. Okay, so in the last video, we ended on question number 13, and in this video, we start with question number 14. So, question 14 says When a system has been created, documentation needs to be produced. Explain why technical documentation is needed. Okay, and um, yeah, so you guys must know that there are two types of documentation um, that are there. So you have technical documentation and you have user documentation. Technical documentation is usually written for people who are in charge of the system, like who are technical, like programmers, um, technicians, and stuff like that. Um, these are the guys who are going to be working on um, um, the document um, for upgrades, uh, maintenance, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, user documentation, on the other hand, is written for the end users. Okay, so these are the guys who are using the system, um, who have been called to try out the system, find out what is there, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's answer this question um, uh, very well. Okay, so part A says explain why technical documentation is needed. So technical documentation. Okay documentation helps programmers okay helps programmers okay to um, for example things like update or let's say upgrade the system Okay, so it also helps them to maintain the system. To maintain or improve, yeah, let's say improve the system. Okay, so it is usually written for people who are in charge of the technicality of the system okay um, people like um, programmers or software developers or system analysts okay um, or code, de uh, code designers um, whatever you call them in your country okay explain why user documentation is needed now i say that this is a document that is written for the end users it usually explains so it's a document document written let's say it's written for the end users to help them understand how one to use the system maybe okay so you guys when you buy for example a, a tv set it comes with a manual uh, inside and that manual is what is known as a user documentation okay so it helps you to um, how to use the system also um, it also explains just like a manual it explains how the system works okay the system works and it can also it can also help a user to troubleshoot okay so troubleshooting is a very important aspect if, for example, you, you were watching your TV, you were watching um, the game Barcelona versus Chelsea, <laughs> the UEFA game that has been just scheduled, and um, um, suddenly your TV just shut down when Barcelona was about to score. <laughs> And then you try to switch it on, it's, it's not going on. Then your dad says, hey, find the manual for this TV. And then you rush to find the manual. And then you find that actually your TV is programmed to shut down after 5 minutes. Or maybe after 30 minutes. Uh, and so on and so forth as an energy saving te technique. Okay. So 
then you check from the manual and then the manual says well um, actually when this happened you just have to uh, maybe switch switch the TV off from the mains and switch it on again and it will start up again okay so that is part of troubleshooting all right okay so um, I think we are done with this question let me go to um, the next question so question 15 says part of a database report showing August temperatures in several cities in India is shown below and you have um, the table here um, which is the database Describe how you would create a calculated field called temp diff to show the difference between the maximum and minimum temperatures. Now, the same thing that I was talking about in the other videos. You guys are familiar with this. You can easily create it in Microsoft Access. You can create um, a calculated field uh, called temp diff, and then you can also find um, which is the difference between the maximum and minimum temperatures. It's very easy. You just subtract the maximum temperature minus the minimum temperature and that equals your temp diff. Okay? Very easy to do that in, um, in access. But you're being asked to describe, okay, how you'd go about this process of doing this. Okay? So, first, create a query or um, if you are not good, you can create <laughs> a report. Not that you're not good. I mean, you can create, it's, a, it's an option that you need to decide yourself, okay? So you can create a query or you can create a report, okay? I love to create queries, okay? So if you go um, in, my, uh, in my videos, you'll notice that I create queries um, because it's very easy to create a report um, uh, based on a query that you would have created, okay? So uh, create a query and then okay and then create a a calculated field which will be run at runtime okay at runtime in other words, at the point of executing, executing your query, that's when this um, um, field runs, okay? So the field will be created based on the existing table. So the fields are coming from existing table that you are using in the formula, existing table and existing fields fields okay so what is going to happen so eg so the fields in question so you say ie the fields are maximum temp now these are ne need to be in square brackets so maximum temp because you're accessing a field comma minimum temp and this also needs to be in square bracket so the formula would then be um, temp diff full colon square um, bracket maximum temp okay full colon minus full colon minimum temp And that will be your formula um, to show the calculated field. Okay, so this is what you would do. All right. Next question. Okay, so 3D printers are used for producing personalized prescription drugs. Okay, so give two advantages of using 3D printers for this purpose. Okay, so. 3D printers, guys, are um, uh, a technology that is that just came up. I don't know if it came up in the 21st century or in the 20th century, but it's a new technology and it is being used for producing models. It can produce real-looking objects. Okay, so not only can it produce objects that are lifeless, <laughs> it can also produce objects that give life, <laughs> like drugs. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> So lifeless objects like cars, I know people will think cars are um, uh, the real deal. Yeah, I love cars. Okay, so 
3 d printers can produce models of cars for example like concept cars and stuff like that and um, um, uh, but for this purpose we want to know what is the advantage of having a 3d printer for the case of um, the case of pre um, um, coming up with drugs okay so one thing that we know is that because of this drugs can be printed or drugs can be produced on a large scale or larger scale okay so the printer doesn't get tired uh, I mean you just command and the same um, the same formula that is used to come up with these drugs will, it will use that formula and come up with um, 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 build this drug so suppose you have a drug which looks like a capsule like this um, a 3d printer is going to print out this drug okay usually this one is red yeah? <laughs> ah this one is red <laughs> okay it depends with the capsule that you're talking about some I mean they are yellow some they are thin okay so most people who are on drugs I'm sure they would agree that uh, some of these um, drugs they look funny okay so um, drugs can be produced um, on a large scale okay um, they can also be produced drugs can be produced be produced on demand to reduce on wastage so what this means you know you find that sometimes they print too many drugs like they print too many RVs sending them to Africa thinking that there are more people in Africa who are HIV positive and only to find that actually there are fewer people in Africa who are HIV positive and the rest of the drugs they are wastage <laughs> I'm just joking okay but you get the picture so you can print too many drugs thinking you know and then you waste invested little money so you can print drugs on demand okay um, um, I mean you you have let's say um, 2,000 people are sick and you print maybe say 2,500 just to cover the population um, of, of course with a contingency of 500 okay there are also um, other advantages like, um, you know, because this can happen faster. I mean, if a, a hospital has um, a printer, which is um, a 3D printer, which is used to produce these drugs. I mean, you go to the pharmacy, you find that, the, the, I mean, in the hospital, the pharmacy does, don't have the drug. They just write down the name of the drug. You take it to the printing room and you give them the name of the drug. And then they retrieve the compounds, the formula and stuff like that. And they print and within minutes you have your drugs. And, and so patients can easily get the drug um, um, there okay so the other thing is that um, I mean the, the drug you can cast customize the drug to suit individual needs some people they struggle swallowing capsules that look like this some they want drugs that look like this as though it's a football uh, thing yeah <laughs> okay some again they want drugs that look like this like a pizza that's when they feel that they have appetite okay to take the drug so I mean drugs can be customized um, to suit um, the individual patients okay and um, then let's look at um, part B so give to its advantage of using 3d printers for this purpose okay again um, the cost of these uh, machines are very high so the cost of purchasing Um, 3d printers can be very high okay I don't know about the maintenance uh, cost for 3d printers if they do need maintenance costs um, things like um, like for example laser jet printers you find that you need um, toner um, for um, a desktop or inkjet printers you need uh, ink and stuff like that I don't know about 3d printers what you need <laughs> okay so um, the materials also to produce these drugs could be um, um, expensive okay and there are not many 3d printers that are um, available on the market that can do this kind of job of printing drugs okay so um, sometimes again you find that if these printers became very common 
um, they could be misused okay so um, 3d printers could be misused to produce illegal drugs okay to produce illegal drugs so imagine um, um, if uh, cocaine dealers manage to get a hold of that today cocaine dealers in movies we see them patching up their or packaging their cocaine in packages like a, like a ton of brick huh? like a ton of brick it's like this and inside here you see that there is there is cocaine and somebody will find these ducks hidden under the car seats maybe <laughs> When you watch too many movies, this is what you're going to get. <laughs> so you find that now cocaine dealers, they begin to say, well, we're going to be producing something that looks like um, a burger. Okay. So you have um, something like that. Then you have some meat pie. But inside here, that's when they stick some cocaine and you have your burger like that. So if the policeman, well, there is some some leaves there i think let's color it a bit some leaf there okay some vegetable and then you have something like some meat down there yeah that looks good okay so you have something like that okay so drug dealers would start to produce now hide all their drugs um in i mean in some legitimately looking um printouts okay so that you can least suspect them okay so 3d printers could really become now a den or a hub for producing illegal drugs some they would even just um make up these drugs um okay um sorry those are my students now posting up their assignments uh okay so these classes are the tuition the students are submitting some of their classes okay um, some of their assignments, not some of their classes. Okay, so that is that is that on um, 3D printers. Of course, just two marks. Um, there are some of the points that I've mentioned here, and you can go ahead and um, 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 list some of the other points that you want. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do now, I don't know how much time I've used up for this uh, video. Let me just check. Um, do I need to record a new uh, a new video? Come on. I don't know how much time I've used up for this um, video. So just give me a moment. Okay, so that is 17 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to have to pause um, this video. Um, and I'll continue with the last part of the exam in the next video. Okay, so thank you so much guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next video um, shortly.